appreciate you uh, your tuning in. We have two fabulous uh, performers uh, performing groups for you this evening. And uh, I'm going to start off with the first one that I did a whole lot of homework on so I could make absolutely certain that I would not mess up their name. Here they are, Flaming O. Oh. Flamingo! Oh, 
We broke a string, but here we go.
sorry for the broken string. I hope we can make up for that. Nobody's fault but my own.
Got a couple more for you. And then the almighty work shirt, baby. All right. What? You want me to check it right now? Yeah, I'm playing Eric's baby. He's so worried about it. All right, last song for you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Brian.
right. Thank you, everybody. Work shirts up next, man. Work shirts all right. He said to the microphone that is now on. Hi, how you doing? Thank you ever so much, Flamingo. That was wonderful. Yeah. Indeed. A big round of applause for that. Thank you. So we will have workshop up in very in a very short period of time. But first, we will have this inf inspirational video for Art Sanctuary. Uh, I did want to announce that a Cappy Sue of Alton, Illinois, won the two H.A. Uh, Milton uh, uh, portraits that uh, we had available. And, uh, you know, actually giving away all these portraits has uh, kind of uh, depleted my uh, portraiture uh, collection. Uh, I do have several of these adorable uh, portraits of uh, Barbara Bush, and uh, we'll be giving those out uh, later on. Oh, the, the answer, by the way, uh, was uh, we, we were asking about what was on Cooter's t-shirt. That was Cheech and Chong. You're absolutely right. But it was not Alan and Rossi like somebody else said. Anyway, uh, Pay attention to the video. There will be a quiz afterwards, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be winging several of these. Uh, you can actually put one in each room of your house. Uh, one of these wonderful Barbara Bush. It says it must be from the late '80s, early '90s, because it says Washington underneath there. So obviously she was in Washington at the time. All right. Pay attention to the video. There'll be a question later. We'll see you later. Lisa Fry and I am a co-founder of Art Sanctuary. We've been around for about 16 years now which is a long time. So this is our building standing outside here in Schnitzelberg, Germantown uh, on this gorgeous day. Art Sanctuary is a 26,000 square foot space. We have a 10,000 square foot venue area where we hold weddings, fundraisers, we have bands play, do DJ dance nights, kind of a goth type feel um, monthly. We do um, a late for dinner that we've been working on the last few months because it's a live streaming situation. Um, the Vava Vixens do our shows here, um, which I'm also manager and producer of that. Very near and dear to my heart. We usually do about three of those a year, and that's a huge, if you haven't seen one yet, look us up, they're amazing. The community that exists within the building, very supportive of one another. Um, it gives a safe place for, for us weirdos to come. Using musical theater is always a challenge for a group that is constantly changing venues and moving around, putting shows up in different places around town. And when we did our first show here at Art Sanctuary, which was Carry the Musical, we found immediately a group of people who were very interested in allowing us to really um, realize the artistic vision we had for the show. So we were able to have um, really uh, respectful, positive, productive conversations with everyone here so that they felt like their venue was being respected and treated well, and we felt like we were able to really do all we could to bring the show to life. So that resulted in a show that we have, you know, never could have imagined doing because of how large it was and how everyone here at Art Sanctuary helped us make it the best it could be. Um, we came back for Pippin, which was a musical uh, that really basically turned this whole room into a circus, a literal circus, and anywhere else I don't see how the show could have been as big as it was, but thanks to the team at Art Sanctuary that wanted us to be able to succeed in pulling off this circus, as well as our own internal uh, designers, choreographers, directors, actors, we were able to really do um, some incredible magic in here. And then for the last show we did in here, which was American Psycho, we built in the, in the theater event space room, we built a whole fashion runway that extended through the auditorium and it had immersive aspects for the audience. There was blood, there was lights on the ground. It was all over the place. And these three shows we've done in here just would not have worked anywhere else. We couldn't have brought them to life anywhere else because the, 
the flexibility and versatility of Art Sanctuary made them possible. We, of course, had the design minds behind it, but thanks to people who operate this venue, allowing us to really make some bold choices and also um, working with us to ensure we were meeting you know, every kind of safety standard we needed to, there was just unprecedented production value and I can't imagine having done them anywhere else. Hi, my name is Jerrica Jones. I'm the executive director of Girls Rock Louisville. Girls Rock Louisville is a nonprofit dedicated to empowering girls, gender nonconforming youth, and trans youth of all identities through music. So what we do is we provide music lessons, we form bands with the children, they get to collaborate and create original songs, then they get to perform them at a live showcase. So Art Sanctuary has been just the most incredible venue, um, not only just for Girls Rock Louisville's Sparkle Ball, but also for the kids to showcase. The kids always come in and they are enamored by the space, by the stage. It's been welcoming. We've been able to have like real shows here where like we get to celebrate what the kids have made and, and it's beautiful. The community comes, we pack the house. It's, it's just beautiful. So Art Sanctuary has provided Girls Rock Louisville, whether it be our showcases or some of our fundraising events, a place to call home that's welcoming, that's fun, that's edgy, that's us, um, it's local and it's beautiful. Late for Dinner was uh, conceived as a, as a way for uh, musicians to have an opportunity during this period of time to perform when they couldn't play out at clubs and uh, also an opportunity for people at home to be able to enjoy music without having to go to a club. Uh, Art Sanctuary has very graciously helped set that up and make it possible for their stage to be used and, uh, and so it's been a very interesting and exciting uh, couple of months here that we've, uh, that we've been doing this. Well, Late for Dinner has uh, allowed musicians to, uh, to have an opportunity to perform uh, and uh, it's, you know, this, this period of time here they, they, when people got started they knew how long it was going to take for them to be able to get out and play again. And this, uh, they've been very excited about being able to, to get out and, and uh, perform even, uh, even though there's not a live audience. And uh, it's, it's, it's helped them quite a bit. It's also helped people that are fans of theirs to be able to keep up with them. And it's been a good opportunity for them to show off what they've been doing since uh, they've been quarantined. I've uh, noticed a lot of musicians have, uh, have new material and actually been putting out new recordings uh, during this whole time, and this is an opportunity to showcase those. Um, Radio Arcane has grown. Oh, we've existed only since 2017, so about three years. Um, we started off just doing uh, kind of DJ nights but we have grown where we are booking touring acts from around the country. Um, we interview them on our podcast. I don't know, there's just a lot of angles to having a community of creative people around you that is highly beneficial to artists that sometimes you just don't have at home on your own. There are about 14 of us. We have a very diverse group of people, other creative people that uh, make music. A lot of us are in bands. Um, some of us are visual artists, a lot of us are sound production. It's hard to stay in the groove of being creative. You have jobs, you have distractions, you know, some people have children or whatever, and having a space that you can go to that's a quiet space for you, where you're open to create, but you also have a community of people. But being able to stream music at Art Sanctuary, they're still able to be on stage with professional lighting and professional sound. And uh, it just gives a little bit more of that live experience <laughs> that people miss. Okay. Uh, Vava Vixens is a program of Art Sanctuary. Um, we have been around for a little over 10 years now. And we have been performing uh, variety shows and many themed shows about three to four a year. 
um, for that whole time. And we have a very diverse group, probably of about 30 different performers, um, all different kinds like singing, dancing, and uh, big choreographed dance numbers, um, aerials, um, all kinds of really fun strip tease, of course, since it is a burlesque uh, troupe. Um, but it's become really a, a, a source of joy for me. Uh, I'm the manager and producer of that group, and we've, we've become a tight, tight knit, close family. And it just it's it's a it's a place where people can feel a, feel safe to explore themselves as an artist. One of the really cool things about Baba Vixens and Art Sanctuary is that it brings a multitude of it brings everybody together. So our audiences tend to be anywhere from 18 to 80. Um, it's all different, uh, all different kinds of people. So um, you never know what you're going to see in here, which is amazing. And it's really brought a, a community together that um, really, it's, it's a place where you can feel comfortable and safe. This is a sanctuary after all. Uh, when I first joined, we were the only burlesque troupe in the city. Uh, now there are plenty more, but we are probably one of the largest ones now. Uh, we do burlesque, we do variety shows, we have singers, aerialists, circus performers, just everything you can think of, uh, all pushed into one big, uh, raunchy is the wrong word, tastefully raunchy show. <laughs> I think it's so important to Louisville. Um, people are born and raised to think that your sexuality isn't necessarily an okay thing and especially myself starting in it at such a young age like it has completely shaped the way that I feel about my body I know now that I'm beautiful and that that's a good thing to be able to flaunt yourself and be like this is okay and this is worth it um, it's made a huge difference in my life. Um, and I have talked to plenty of audience members that say, um, as myself, as a curvy lady, that uh, it's very empowering to see so many people of so many different shapes and sizes and genders and sexualities and everything just coming together to be worth it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'd say uh, I didn't realize how many of my friends were DJs and in bands and dancers until I started coming to shows at Art Sanctuary. And it's really just a place where we can be creative. And I had no idea how many of my friends were visual artists either until I saw their art at Art Sanctuary. So for me, I mean, the place is just more than a venue, more than a bar, more than a theater. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's amazing. For me, The Vixens is an opportunity to actually do a little bit more creative things that I couldn't do with a regular theater show. I mean, so many musicals and uh, regular plays that you do, you have your very strict script and you have the songs that you have to learn, but with The Vixens, you actually get to create it yourself. Uh, at the rehearsals, you really get to know each other, especially when you're, you know, let's say you're doing a group dance and you may not have danced with some of the people in the troupe yet, then you get to know how everybody moves and it's a lot more fun to perform. So I really just miss the camaraderie and the creativity and just being on stage with the Baba family. Uh, Art Sanctuary and the Vixens especially have given us an excellent space in order to really be able to experiment with our uh, with our circus arts that we would in a way that probably most other places wouldn't allow us to, especially seeing as uh, the Vixens tend to be a little bit more uh, avant-garde and a little bit more uh, openly sexual. We've been able to uh, play with those types of performances as well as being able to just like that avant-garde aspect of it, being able to really be as creative mm -hmm. as we want to be with our art. Whereas in uh, more commercial settings or more, uh, uh, more, uh, traditional settings would probably not be able to explore the space, so to speak. Drawing together, uh, I would say on the communal aspect, what it does for, for Louisville, um, really reveals a side of uh, just artistic expression all under one roof that I don't know that anywhere else in the city no. that I've ever experienced, uh, especially the just the genuine level of passion that every artist in not just the vixens um, 
and the ability for music. collaboration too. Yeah, like there's there's, there's so much collaboration that happens here that would not happen anywhere else. Yeah, this is my first time ever seeing it in here. Um, having never seen a show, I was just blown away by the the possibilities of what it can do and what it since then has done. Um, the bands that it's brought in, the mm -hmm. like I said, the uh, the fundraising events, um, theater events, uh, practice space for the troupe, and um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But having not been a part of this, what, five years ago, and now just I'm jumping right in to the Vava -Va Vixens, I don't know what what we would have done <laughs> without this facility. I've been with Baba for a good six, seven years now. Uh, I was actually with them before the before I started performing, but uh, it's actually one of the best things that's ever happened to me, to be honest. Never thought I'd ever be on a stage, but this is, uh, this is where I spend most of my time now, and I miss it, and I love it. I wasn't even in Vixens when I started coming here, and to watch it grow in to what it has been growing into is just fantastic. I mean, the add-ons, the people, the place, just the customers, the people that come here to watch us, everything is just top-notch, man. I miss so it There's all. a lot of different communities that share this place, and a lot of times they all come to create the same community. And I've been able to join all of them and they're all fantastic. I miss them. And we're performers with the Vava -Va Vixens and longtime lovers of Art Sanctuary. Yes, this is definitely a second home to us. We dance, we choreograph, we do aerial acrobatics. Rachel sings. Sometimes um, I do the talky things, but they're not my favorite. <laughs> Uh, we make costumes, we uh, make props, yeah, we yeah. wear a lot of hats. We wear a lot of hats. Being um, on stage and being able to perform with my wife, you know, we even perform under the name Gay Lady Duo. Um, we perform all over, not just with Vava, but when we're here and we get to perform as, you know, as us, you know, gay lady duo with our love and our queerness and on stage and people see that and they see our chemistry and they see our love, it just feels really good and people celebrate that. And that is a really cool thing to offer to the queer community and people that aren't queer, they need to see stuff like this and you know, that's, it needs to be more mainstream and you know, we're here for that. We are here for that for sure. Our troop in general, we're just a big family, um, and we all support each other in our craft. We lift each other up. We encourage each other and inspire each other. Um, it's a really unique way to, you know, see other parts of ourselves and express them in different ways, and just have the freedom and the safety to do those things. My name is Keith Waits. I'm the gallery and facility manager at Louisville Visual Art and have been for 14 years. I'm also the managing editor of arts.louisville.com and I have the good fortune to have a three-way relationship with Art Sanctuary and the people here. Uh, as uh, in my role at LVA, we conduct uh, adult figure drawing classes here with Claudia Hammer uh, and have been doing that for a couple of years now very successfully. It's turned out to be a wonderful location with it for us, and uh, as the Managing Editor of Arts Louisville, we have uh, begun to have our annual theater awards in February here at Art Sanctuary. This year there will probably be an online only presence, and Art Sanctuary's ability to provide that opportunity is essential uh, in that relationship. And then also uh, as Managing Editor for Arts Louisville, I review a lot of things, including a lot of live performances, so I've been here to review Baba Vixens and uh, other companies that have used the Art Sanctuary stage for their productions. And uh, it's been a, a wonderful relationship. Art Sanctuary is run by artists, and uh, that I think is maybe the secret to its, uh, to its success and its ability to have these kinds of partnerships. So we have studios here for uh, uh, around 30 artists. And we have them designed specifically to keep 
the cost down. So an individual artist may have a 50 square foot studio for $50 a month, but they have access to a whole lot more than that. There's, um, there's access to tools for framing and large light tables and big workspaces and uh, wall space to really back up from your work and uh, not to mention the human beings that are around that are that care about the same things that you can engage with. Um, kind of a studio situation like one might have in college. It has exponentially improved my practice having a studio space because I'm a professional artist I need a space that's purely designated for my art and art making and um, it's also really helpful because when um, I was first starting uh, it's a very kind of solitary practice and um, having this group and this community is very helpful. Uh, the affordability of the studio spaces I think is really helpful and important um, because as an artist it's really hard to uh, afford um, a studio space. Uh, artists need space outside of their homes that are that's designated specifically for uh, exploring whatever's happening in their in their artistic practice. Oh, it's given me that space to just like lay it all out, and if I need to just close up and go home, I can just leave my mess there. Um, you know. There's the conversation is waiting for me right when I get back. Um, and it's provided a um, network of other people around me. At one point we were doing critiques um, and I feel like there's always someone around that I can be like, hey, what do you think about this? Or do you have any glue I can borrow? Or, hey, I don't need these supplies anymore and you put them in a space where other people can have them. So there's um, all that sharing of supplies and ideas is pretty awesome. One of the benefits I've been finding, especially in the last couple years, I've been um, getting more of the business end of my studio practice together. Um, and I've been inviting curators to come in and do studio tours. And it's just really nice to have that um, space where I can, you know, put everything out and show them everything I've been working on and you know it's it's like inviting somebody to your office um, it it provides another level of um, authenticity and business appeal you know just like I'm serious <laughs> I'm renting a studio and I'm, I'm doing my work um, I'm not screwing around so if you're watching this I'm sure you're aware of how vital the arts are to the city to any community um, it's even more vital to the artists themselves and part of how art gets made is having a place to make it and that's what we do. We provide artists a place to really explore their art and, uh, and we can't do it without you. That's, uh, well, that's, that's why we need your help. Um, there, are, there are 30 visual artists here. There are probably as many performing artists here. And then all of the outside uh, performing acts, musical groups, um, dance groups, theater groups, uh, traveling artists, people who um, exhibit in the gallery that wouldn't necessarily have access. And with donations, we're able to provide a, an affordable space for them to do it. And we need your help.
into the microphone. He said into the microphone, hello, yes, thank you very much for that most informative video about uh, Art Sanctuary. Uh, of course, we do uh, welcome donations from here and uh, would very, very much like you to participate as best you can. Uh, of course, just watching is participation, but uh, uh, sending something in would be handy too because, you know, after these, uh, after these uh, portraits of Barbara Bush, I'd, I'm not sure I've got much of anything left. Uh, I might have to go to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, I, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe some of the uh, Dutch queens uh, that I might have some portraits of. But nevertheless, uh, here's your question if you, uh, if you want several of these. And, of course, the present company is, uh, is excluded. You cannot shout out your answer. It has to come back to me uh, later on. We'll, we'll go through and we'll find the correct answer. When we had Coco Dynamo on the screen, if you noticed her right arm, she had on her right arm a character from a show and a film on there. Name another character from that show or film. Thank you, and let me let me know about that. Again, uh, these folks are working hard. Uh, Flamingo, work shirt, all the bands that come through here, they are uh, they're they're putting their music together. They're practicing. They're playing their hearts out for you. And today, the first Friday of. Uh, of uh, the month, uh, of each month, as a matter of fact, right now, Bandcamp, the, any bands that have a Bandcamp account uh, will be able to, you can actually go buy their, uh, their, their music, buy their merchandise, and Bandcamp will not charge them on the first Friday of every month. So bear that in mind. And if you like what you hear here, go to Bandcamp and find these folks. Hunt them down and, uh, and buy their stuff. And buy all everybody's stuff. Just keep buying stuff. That's what I did this morning before I had coffee. Now I'm broke. Anyway, so next, coming up here, a two-fisted, down-to-earth kind of guys, the sort of folks, the sort of folks that have a name on their work shirt.
Is there any NPR listeners out there? Anybody listen to NPR? No? This one is uh, for the NPR listeners. Ready? This is NPR.
Hey, thanks, we've been work shirt. Oh my God, Flamingo is my favorite. Art Sanctuary is my favorite. Frankie and Lisa are my favorite, and you all are my favorite. Stay chill, rock on. Thank you again, thank you again, WorkShirt, and thank you also for Flamingo and all of you folks out there watching. Um, I do hope you were paying attention and that uh, you'll be able to come in and uh, tell me uh, what was, uh, what that question, uh, what the answer to that question was, and there are multiple ones, so it'll give you an opportunity to, uh, to really explore that, and uh, might be more than one winner, you never can tell. All right, anyway, thank you all for tuning in. We will be back next Friday at 8 o'clock, and uh, we will have uh, two performances that evening, both of them from uh, the staff at WXOX. Their fifth anniversary is coming up uh, for being on the air, and uh, it's uh, a, nice, uh, a nice evening for them to get out and stretch their uh, uh, playing fingers. In the meantime, enjoy yourselves, stay safe, stay warm, and by all means, stay healthy. And uh, don't, uh, don't go out without uh, one of these guys. So uh, anyway, we'll catch you later. Good night, everyone. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Wait just one minute. I can't leave yet. Now I can leave because I'm late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs>